Meghan Markle, the Duchess of Sussex, we're going to talk about her and uh, what was going on uh, during the, all of those events for the Queen. So I hope you like the video. If you like the video, please do like the video. And if you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe. And thank you very much for watching. Hi, I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. So she's very controversial. I don't know for not doing very much. So uh, as far as controversial things, perhaps, I don't know. Some people might say her podcast, the first few episodes have been, um, you know, talk inspiring. And uh, some would say that a look one way or the other that she makes uh, is uh, something that's not nice. And uh, and even she's asked uh, King Charles for an audience to maybe clear the air. So let's see what all of this is about. And uh, we'll do that uh, in this drawing. Okay, it's going to be Meghan Markle. Let's see what we can figure out. Or the Duchess of Sussex, I should say. So here we go. Quite the controversial figure, that uh, Duchess of Sussex. Although it seems to me that they're just trying to get along. You know, I saw a nice uh, interview with um, Tyler Perry. You know, he loaned them the use of one of his mansions and security while they were there when they first came uh, to California, I believe. And um, and he's, he says that he's really inspired by their love. So that was nice. Uh, it's good to hear something positive uh, for a change. So let's see what we get to know about Meghan Markle. What is the deal for her? So what do we want to know? We want to know, is she trying to cause problems for Prince Charles? And I see a reflection uh, right here of the television. I have a television that is uh, right here, and it's on, and I see the reflection of it in the uh, window, so I'll have to take care of that in the future. But um, anyway, so Meghan Markle, let's not, I'm going to try not to call her that. I'm going to try to call her the Duchess. Of Sussex. I mean, that's what she is. She's Harry's wife. Harry is uh, the Duke of Sussex. His grandmother uh, gifted him that title, uh, which I guess is kind of like you would give someone uh, anything. It's his, and it's who he is, and so that's who she is. They don't have a last name, really. Uh, Mountbatten, Windsor, I suppose, if they want to use that. But before we do anything, let's just have a moment of meditation. Okay. Meghan Markle, here I am using it already, but the Duchess of Sussex, Meghan the Duchess, Duchess of Sussex. Let's do three cards just to get started to get a temperature uh, on her. What can the cards tell us quickly about the Duchess? Three cards. One, two, three. What's going through my mind is I'm wondering, is she legitimate? Is she uh, good or bad? But uh, let's see what the cards can tell us about the Duchess. First card. So this is the King of Cups. I like this card. You know, cups are compassion, emotion, and I tend to <clears throat> try to lead towards a positive interpretation. So since this is talking about cups, so those are emotional situations. This is the king of cups. So this is just the very uh, tops of that uh, emotional pile. Next thing for Megan, what can the card tell us about her? Her intention, sort of. Three of Swords is broken heart. So we're talking about she's loaded with emotion 
And the next very card next up is a broken heart. So could this be talking about loss of her family, loss of Prince Harry's family? And then the last card for Megan is the Four of Swords. And uh, the Four of Swords is um, kind of knowing when to take a break, when to take a rest, when to understand that this is the time to just lay still, study the environment around you before you get up. So the definition of Meghan Markle right now, look at me, I have to use her name, don't I, of the Duchess of Sussex right now, is that it's a big offering of emotion, that, that she's a well of emotion. Um, with this Three of Swords, it's in the center, and so this is uh, really focused around uh, broken hearts, or broken promises even. And then the last card for that is a Four of Swords, knowing when to just kind of sit in your grief. You can see that this fellow is very grief stricken, and uh, uh, before you make a move, before you make a decision, before you move forward, so it looks like that's where she's at right now. Lots of emotions, uh, lots of uh, hurt feelings, and understanding you have to just kind of stew in your grief, sit in that grief for a minute. So that gives us a baseline as to where her uh, psyche may be at this moment. Remember, all these uh, readings have to do with what's going on at that moment. So now we'll do six cards to sort of give us, you know, what the cards, what can the cards tell us about uh, the Duchess of Sussex? Okay, that's one, two, three, four, five, and six. The Duchess of Sussex. What can the cards tell us? about Megan right now signifier card okay so we start out here with the nine of wands so wands are our um, actions uh, forward movement uh, ideas plans the nine of wands is typically feeling very much embattled uh, so this fella here, in keeping with that last card of the three card draw we just did, where it says that four swords is kind of waiting to know what to do before you make a move forward. This nine of wands is, is kind of unfortunate to say this. These, this, the persona that she has right now is embattled uh, with uh, the actions, the plans, the forward movement that, that is all around her waiting to take place. The um, uh, challenge to that is the world. So the world card, um, this is pretty uh, interesting as a matter of fact, because they are on a world stage and they're being judged by the world in general. But the, the 21 card of the world uh, in tarot is beginnings and endings and major. I mean, it's a definite beginning, a definite uh, ending and something new uh, coming up forward here. So all of this embattlement is challenged by this definite beginnings and endings. Sounds appropriate, because it certainly is where they are. Uh, the base of this for Megan, with this Three of Cups of Celebrations. So the whole idea is to move all of this sort of grief, this doom, uh, into um, some sort of uh, celebrations, okay? And, and those are emotional celebrations, with this being the Three of Cups. The, and it's interesting because the Three of Cups is usually three women, I find, uh, on in typical tarot decks. But this one includes a couple of women and looks like a gentleman here. So, interesting. Little tidbit. Now, the past of this reading for Meghan Markle, what's going on for her, is this moon card. So, in the past, we have secrets being revealed. So, it looks like decisions about all of those secrets... Uh, that are just waiting to come out have, have it's been moved to the past position okay so I think decisions have been made about those secrets and how they will be revealed because that is in the past now in the sky of this reading for Meghan Markle where are you at right now in your thought process in your in your brain with this nine of cups okay well this is a very good card to get because in the sky this is kind of what we're aiming for this is the nine of cups this is sometimes called the greedy merchant sometimes displayed as a, a, a figure sitting down with all of his nine cups displayed on a shelf behind him 
And so in the sky of this, it's interesting that it's the greedy merchant because they're trying to establish a business model, some way to um, to um, pay for themselves. And at the same time, the Nine of Cups, cups can be uh, on the road to happy family. So all of that's pretty good. Now, the likely outcome of the first part of this for Meghan Markle, and we'll read it all over, I'm going to do a full Celtic cross, is uh, right here, this Princess of Wands. Well, the princess is one of the least um, important of the royal cards, and she is, in fact, a princess through her marriage to Harry. If she wanted to, to do so, she could call herself Princess Harry, just like there's a the Duke of Kent, uh, the Queen's cousin, uh, is his wife is known as the... Uh, 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 Princess of Kent or Princess, I forget his name, Princess whoever he is of Kent uh, by his name. So the, the the likely outcome of all of this is that the princess and her has a plan that she's leaning on but it's not as if the, she were a queen or a king of, of uh, wands, of actions. She's only a princess so she can only you know suggest uh, the idea that she'll be coming forward. So it looks like this all has to do with, it seems to me like she is the one who is the m m organizer, at least, behind the empire, I think, that they need to build. Not just want to build, but, but must build. Okay, so four cards to finish this off. The very self of this question as to where is Megan in her mind right now? Okay, and this comes up to us again with the Princess of Swords. This is very good that this is the signifier of this question because it still leaves her as the princess, but now she's she's dealing with truth, justice, rules, and law with the swords. She is the, she's the Princess of Swords, having to really get the idea out there uh, having to do with that truth, justice, rules, and law. But it's in the environment of what? It's in the environment of the Ten of Swords, and the Ten of Swords is the end. It's a downfall. It's a, it's a hard stop. So this idea, this weak princess of truth, just in, and rules and laws in the environment of a hard stop regarding those same, those same truths. Okay? Interesting. The hopes and the fears for this, for uh, Megan the Duchess of Sussex, is uh, this Six of Wands. Now the Six of Wands, the hopes and the fears, Six of Wands is uh, celebrations is victory and you see it very clearly right here in this little babe with the holly uh, wreath on its head holding that one this very uh, uh, it flourished and everyone's having a great time so the hopes and the fears for this are celebrations of actions ones are actions and plans and then the likely outcome of the whole thing for Meghan Markle Duchess of Sussex is the is this an ace this is an ace of swords no, it can't be an ace. Let me look at it very, very carefully. This is a six. Okay, it's a six of swords. Ah, the six of swords is great. I should have known it. If I look at the picture, six of swords is usually six swords stuck in a boat and moving out of troubled water. So this one right here is, is showing this family, and there are four, as a matter of fact, in this boat, it looks like, uh, moving out of troubled water. So just to read it over again, uh, Duchess of Sussex is uh, represented by this Nine of Wands uh, really being in battle. And it's in the environment of the world card, which is a definite ending and a new beginning. Something has definitely come to an end and there's a new beginning happening. But the base of it all are celebrations of cups of emotion. Um, the past of this is the moon card, which is secrets being revealed, but they've already been decided on. Those secrets to be revealed have already been decided on, so in the past. And then the sky of this, uh, uh, first part of this, with this Nine of Cups, is the greedy merchant, which represents their aim is to get themselves uh, uh, situated in a profitable, emotional, uh, uh, um, forward movement uh, plan. The likely outcome of the first part of that with this Princess of Wands is that no matter what, it's a weak plan, wand, this actions, it's just got the strength of a princess behind it. And then the very question of that says, look, she can be the Princess of Swords, truth, justice, rules, and law, and that's what she wants, in the environment of, sadly, the Ten of Swords, which is a dead stop. It's the end of something, and it's, it, it's a definite grinding halt so, and then something else will start just like that world card indicates but a bit more severe here and then the hopes the fears for this with this um six of wands again is telling us that we are looking for victory just like we're looking for victory here we're looking for emotional uh, or uh, 
a victory of plans, emotional victory here and victory of plans right here. And then the likely outcome for everything with this six of swords is moving all of this out of troubled water. So it's a process and uh, it looks like she understands that it is a process and that's where they're at, trying to piece the plan together to get themselves moving on. That's what I see. Like I always say, you might not agree with how I read the cards, but you can't dispute what the cards represent once they fall. Even whatever your interpretation is, if at least you're using standard interpretations, um, I think perhaps you have to um, somewhat uh, agree with, with, with what I come up with. Anyway, I hope you do. And if you don't, let me know in the comments and uh, tell me what you want me to read on because I'll read on that. Hey, I'm going to show you the cards now. Hang on. Okay, so this is the newest edition. This is uh, the second time I purchased from this group. Uh, and uh, the, these cards are called Revival Art Tarot Second Edition. And uh, they're from Taracho uh, Studios, which you can see right here. And they come to me, I think it's from Russia via the Netherlands. But uh, they're a lot of money. And um, but they're beautiful cards and you'll see. So they come in a very typical little cardboard box. No big deal there at all. Um, then the um, instruction booklet, again, is not uh, anything to write home about. It's just a typical little instruction booklet. The one good thing is that it is easily uh, read. And uh, in the uh, regular, uh, in the lower arcana cards, they've got an extra card in each uh, suit. So you know, you've got cups, wands, swords, and uh, I can never think of the forward suit off the top of my head. Uh, pentacles. Uh, but so you, they go all the way to the Ten of, of Swords, for instance. The next one then should be a page, but here we have a Princess of Swords. And then after the Princess of Swords, you still get the page, the knight, the queen, and the king. So you have one extra card for each of those four suits. So instead of 78, uh, 79, uh, 80, 81, 82 cards total in the pack. So that's interesting. So if that Princess um, confused you, you could just take those four cards out and use them for some special occasion or never use them at all, or put them in there and uh, this gives you an idea of how to divine the extra card. Uh, so very interesting. Then the cards themselves, they're really good stock. Uh, once you get them broken in, and what I mean by that is, you know, when they come off uh, production, they're really pressed together and there's no air between the cards and you can't hardly get between them. So it takes a little bit of shuffling and, and getting them uh, some air between the cards uh, before they're usable, really, and, uh, and not sticking to each other. And then the back of them is beautiful, and I haven't discovered anything particularly unusual about the back, um, except maybe until this very minute. Let's see. If you have the cards this way, you'll notice that there's a very small little rose right here. So if you see that small rose here up in the right hand corner, then you know this card is going to be upright as it should. However, if this card was inverted, that small little rose becomes two roses. Okay, so if you see it, two roses up here rather than one, then you know that card is going to be inverted. So that's the example. Uh, I like knowing that. I don't know. It just gives you a little edge uh, when you're dealing the cards. And now I can straighten them out and not have to turn it over. I know that this, this is uh, inverted and this is straight. Now, to look at this art is amazing. And each one of these is a work of art that's referenced in the guidebook. For instance, uh, if I look at this uh, Fool, number one, with the Major Arcana, and it tells me that the Fool uh, is, in fact, the name of that piece of art is called A Jester by Philippe Mercier. And, um, and then it gives me the uh, divination for the card, um, beginnings, uh, possibilities, pleasure, etc. The next card, The Magician, if you were to see that one, that is a work of art called The Astronomer by uh, Candlelight, The Astronomer by Candlelight, and it's by, I guess it's going to be Gary Du. So uh, my foreign pronunciations aren't very good, but I do give it a try. So the cards themselves, you can see they go right to the edge of the card. They're beautiful pieces of art. And thought has gone into choosing these cards for the um, uh, position they stand for. The one thing uh, that's not uh, evidence, for instance, um, they're not always um, clear that, for instance, a two of pentacles is a two of pentacles. It might not have two pentacles on the card to tell you that. So they're a little um, interesting there. You should kind of look through the cards and understand what each one stands for first. But, I mean, look at them. They are absolutely beautiful. And it always feels to me like uh, intention has gone into making the selections of these actual pieces of art before uh, they uh, turn them into uh, tarot cards. And I like that. And I think you like them, too. Hey, I'm Mark. It's been my journey through tarot. I'm going to do it all again tomorrow if you want to come. So... Ciao for now.
can really make a big difference. Thank you.